Hello, friends, and welcome back from the Gibson Custom Shop. We have this beautiful Lucille Legacy, the guitar of the king. It's just so cool to hold this guitar. Um, Y'all know about BB and his love affair with the ES series guitars. And I was excited to be able to demo this for you because on one of the greatest experiences in my lifetime, back in 1987, I got to spend five days with BB doing television commercials for the Tennessee Department of Tourism. I got to play Lucille. I got to spend so much time listening to BB playing in between takes because I never saw him without the guitar in his hand. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, the original Lucille was an L30 archtop, a fairly cheap acoustic guitar. And every guitar that he has owned since then, um, I believe the next one he got was a 335 after that. Uh, he played a 345 for a very short period of time. Uh, eventually ended up in the 355 series, which he would always stuff the F holes full of rags to try to knock down any problems that he might have with feedback. And in 1980, he talked to the people from Gibson and they built the Lucille guitar for him, which has no F holes in it. It is still a semi hollow uh, body electric. It has a maple center block in it. It is hollow in the wings, but no air chambers in it that are exposed to the outside. And he felt that gave him a way to control feedback. Um, and you wouldn't think BB would have a lot of problems with that. He wasn't an extremely loud player. But uh, this is just a, a gorgeous guitar. This is one of those guitars when you pick it up and you go, this is a fine guitar. Uh, everything just from the, the dressings of this, the gold hardware. Um, let, let's get into it and talk about it a little bit because this is just an exciting guitar. And before we go too deep into it, for anybody who wants to know, uh, well, what's the difference between this guitar and the real Lucille? since you got to play it. Just to, you know, hopefully this doesn't disappoint you all too much. It was one of the most unremarkable artist's guitars that I've ever touched in my life. Um, it was off the shelf. Was there a special setup on it? No, it had, you know, kind of medium high action on it. Um, it was immaculate for a guitar that he played all the time. The guitar was, was spotless, at least at this point in, in 1987 when I saw it. And it was, you could tell it was a treasure for him. This was, you know, this was his life, this was his music. But as far as, you know, was there anything that felt different about it, other than the fact that it was owned by B.B. King? Uh, no, no, it was, it was a very unremarkable guitar. The, the big difference that I see here, this does come with a set of uh, factory 10 to 46 strings uh, from Gibson. He played eights at that point in time, and I think he did for the rest of his career. Uh, I was shocked to pick up his guitar, and I figured he'd have some, you know, telephone cable-like strings being, you know, the old master bluesman, but he said, you know, blues is hard enough without having to work at it. Um, so he wanted something that made it easy for him to get the expression out of the guitar that he could. But, Gorgeous guitar here. Uh, let's talk about it. It is typical with the ES series. It is a maple poplar maple three ply top, back, and sides on here. Uh, as I said, maple center block in here. Uh, gold hardware on here. ABR one bridge. This is the non wire version, uh, which to me is kind of a plus. Uh, I do like that. Uh, one of the things that's very nice about it is this the, the TP6 tailpiece on here. It's got fine tuners on here. Uh, 
No, there's no Floyd attached, doesn't have a locking nut. And especially for a player like BB, and one of the things, whenever I saw him play, and I got to see him do several shows during the week I spent with him, whether it was just a habit that he'd picked up over the years, or if he was just constantly just looking for something, but with every lick he would play, he would touch a tuner. It was, it was ongoing, uh, you know, he'd... And whether he was really adjusting anything, if that was a, you know, a, a, you know, part of his showman aspect he developed, or if it was just a, you know, habit of sorts that he picked up over the years. Up on top here, these are some fantastic Grover tulip style tuners. Really some of the finest tuners that you'll find on a Gibson guitar. These are so precise and so tight, but not in a way, you know, that, that it's difficult to tune. You can just tell that these are fine tuning mechanisms here. Um, mahogany neck on here, uh, beautiful binding all the way around as you see. Uh, ebony fretboard, typical uh, 12 inch radius on here. Slim taper profile, although I do have to say this particular guitar doesn't feel quite as thin as the 60s series 335s we've had in lately. Uh, it's a gorgeous neck carve, but it feels like it might have just a tad bit more meat on it. The tone that you heard up here in front was one that he used a lot. Uh, this has the notorious whatever you want to call it. If the, some people call this the tone sucker circuit. These guitars did have veritone on them. And this position two setting was one that, that BB liked a lot. It was either off or two. Those were the things that he liked. Um, the veritone circuit, it has uh, it's a resistor choke along with some capacitors that go up in value. You've got six positions in here and actually five of them that are acting as notch filters. Position one is completely bypassed. Uh, just quickly, I'll go to the bridge position. That is with the veritone bypassed. And I'll quickly go through it to show you what I mean. But you'll find there are some center frequencies that are being notched out. And that notch filter gets wider and wider as we go up in the veritone. When you get to that last position, there's not a lot of frequencies left there. A lot of people who have heard the baritone have assumed that it did something to phase. It's really not. Um, it uses a fairly high value resistor to knock down the output and then capacitors that are tuned to notch more and more frequencies out. Probably more like when you get up here to this end. You've got a lot of comb filtering going on, which is, you know, a, a byproduct of an out of phase pickup circuit, but that's not what this is. This is doing it all just with a filter network. Um, I'm going to go back to one. We could spend a lot of time on this. Most people will not use the Veritone a whole lot. I think it can come in really handy for some rhythm parts when you want to position your guitar forward or back in the mix. It, it's a very cool way to do it without just having to rely on a volume knob. We'll go back to position one on the baritone. Here's bridge pickup. Middle position.
back position. Just a gorgeous guitar overall. Beautiful finish on here. This is one of their transparent finishes. I'll give you some close-ups of this so you can see it. Just beautiful. Custom bucker pickups in here that you would expect from a custom shop guitar of this caliber. Absolutely gorgeous. <sighs> yep. This is the guitar of the master, Riley B. King. If you're interested in this beautiful guitar or any other guitar, amp, pedal, give the guys here at More Guitars a call or visit us at More Music in Evansville, Indiana. We would love to get to know you in person and show you around this beautiful store that is filled with guitars of this quality. Give the guys here a call, or gals. They are the experts in every brand they sell, and they would love to hook you up with the guitar of your dreams. So, until next time, friends, stay safe. And I'll see you soon.